This is a video on how we made this lovely little bubbler rock pond feature. More specifically, how we always plumb a swimming pool, a spa, or a pond after we've built the feature. And even more specifically, how we cover the plumbing with removable cover rocks. This is a project that we did at my son's house during a hands-on training class. Not only did we make the bubbler rock pond, but we also remodeled his outside chimney and his inside fireplace and applied a four-foot wainscoting of river rock on all sides of his house. But I digress. Let me get back to the bubbler rock pond, which in these clips has just been fully completed. So let's take a look at how the construction process went down. The construction process for this project all started back at the shop where we fabricated the three bubbler rocks, which we made by seaming together various rock panels that we have. The three rocks were actually made to be five foot, four foot, and three foot in height to give us various falls, you know, from the water coming down the bubblers. But in this clip, we have set the three rocks that where we wanted the pond to be. And Skylar is starting to dig the perimeter of the pond. Next, we see the pond is fully excavated and we are installing a concrete wire mesh as a reinforcement for the concrete. We hand mixed and hand applied the shell. And then immediately after forming it, we filled it with water to slow cure the shell. Next day, we came back and emptied out the pond and started applying what we call a mortar plaster mixture to ensure better watertight integrity. And again, upon completing that particular coat, we again filled it up to slow cure it overnight. The next day, we emptied the pond and I placed the bubblers in the pond for reference so that I could start laying out where the individual boulders would be placed. Then we started to form the individual boulders with our rock panels that we had cut and tied all the panels together. We then seamed all the boulders with our fiber mixture and let that dry. The next day, we started to touch up any of the rocks that we had formed the day before and began to texture all seamed areas. Now at this point, all the rocks were complete with the one exception of all the removable rocks that would cover the plumbing that we would still need to install. Uh, the plumbing that we're installing is actually behind these bubbler rocks on the bond beam, which you can't see in this particular shot. In this clip, we have laid the plumbing out for where the skimmer canister will be placed. We have also placed the suction line for the pump, the discharge line for the pump, and the water supply line for the autofill water leveler float valve. I'd originally thought that we would need three separate removable cover rocks, but I then moved the float line into the suction discharge cover rock as there was plenty of room to do so. The next step was to create a cement canister around the plastic skimmer canister to fix or to secure the skimmer in a vertically plumb and horizontally level position so that it would always operate correctly. We wanted the skimmer canister to be removable, yet it needed to be interlocking or form-fitting to the pond shell. Prior to cementing the canister, we applied a release agent to the cement shell to where the canister would always be form-fitted to the shell without it bonding to the shell so that it would be totally removable. In this clip, we are hand-forming the cement canister around the plastic canister, and then we let it dry overnight. Next, you see the completed canister, cement canister, ready to be placed so that we could begin forming the cover rock around the canister. In this clip, Skylar is installing the skimmer canister, which is being attached using a union, so as to be totally removable if needed in the future to clean out the pond and or to be able to make repairs to the pond itself and or to the skimmer and its plumbing. Next, we are attaching the pump's discharge line, which feeds the three individual rocks, the bubbler rocks. This is a line that's also being connected by union, as well as each of the bubbler rocks themselves being connected with a union. All elements of this plumbing system are totally removable and not routed through the concrete shell. In other words, no leaks. You can't bond concrete to PVC. It's going to be a leak, and we don't want any leaks and that's why we plumb after we've built the unit and again we can totally remove and, and renew any of the elements therein. In this clip we have started to cut and wire together the panels to form the two cover rocks to hide the plumbing. 
In this clip, I am showing the fact that the top panels of the cover rock are not yet wired or fixed to the panel assembly, as we will first mud the panel seams from inside of the rock so as not to cover the outside texture, the molded texture that the panels have. So we, we've got to seam this pretty wide and long, and we don't want to cover up the natural elements of the textured rock that we've molded. Following day, we take the rock out of the pond, attach the top cover rocks for the skimmer can itself in the top of the rock, and then we mud that from inside again as to not cover the, the molded texture from the outside. In this clip, I'm showing another vantage point of the semi mud, but the boulder on the left that covers the pump is already installed, made and installed. In this clip, I'm just showing the cover rocks are made and textured and hydro sealed and ready to be installed. Well, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was informational to you. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and look forward to some more videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.